All right, thanks for watching, and today I would like to talk to you about the maximum principle, which is a very important property that the heat equation satisfies, and also Laplace's equation. And also, as I mentioned maybe before, there are two kinds of methods in PDEs. One's based on the maximum principle, and the other one's based on energy methods, and today are all about maximum principle methods. So here's the setting. Suppose you have the heat equation, ut equals k uxx, and uh, let's see, with boundary conditions, so here we're assuming, by the way, x is between 0 and l, and then t is between 0 and some terminal time. So we're just focusing, if you want, in terms of x and t. We're just focusing on this rectangle here. So x is between 0 and l, and t is between 0 and time. And moreover, initially, ux0 is phi. So here at the bottom part, we have phi. And then, at, and then we're also focusing on the lateral sides. So u0t, that is g of t, and ul of t is h of t. So here. Here u is h of t, and then here u is g of t. And again, just think of it as follows. We have this metal rod, and initially at point, uh, so initially the dis temperature distribution is phi, but then on the endpoints, we put kind of like dragons. <laughs> I'm very bad at drawing dragons, but just then you put fire at the left endpoint and the right endpoint. So here the left endpoint, the right endpoint, sorry, is H, and here the left endpoint is G. And the question is, when is the temperature hottest? So what is max of U? And here by max, I mean the maximum of u on the whole rectangle. And the maximum principle says the following, and it's really cool. So maximum principle. The largest value of u is attained. Basically, the largest value of u is attained either initially or at the lateral points, at the end points. So max of u is the largest of max of g, max of h, and max of phi. In other words, the temperature is hottest at the lateral parts and the boundary parts, at the, the bottom part. And what this maximum principle says, it cannot be hotter somewhere inside, which uh, it's weird. I mean, might seem weird at first, but actually it makes sense because think you're putting, you know, you're lighting a rod on fire or like making food hot or something. The question is, when is the food hottest? Well, Definitely, I mean, it's probably hotter initially than it is at later times, because if you ever had the experience of taking food out of the microwave or out of the oven, you should not touch this initially because it'll be very hot. So definitely it'll be like colder here than initially. On the other hand, well, if you put fire at the endpoints, it's probably very hot at the endpoints. So it's probably not as hot in between the endpoints. And therefore, combining all those, you can say it's kind of hottest at the bound bottom and also hottest at the boundary and never like hottest in the middle. But just careful, this maximum principle says it can never be hotter inside than on the boundary, but it could be equally as hot just careful. However, on the other hand, there's this thing called the strong maximum principle that says, actually, 
it cannot be hotter inside, unless maybe U is constant everywhere. So it turns out, seriously, the maximum is attained at the lateral parts or, the, uh, or uh, at the bottom. And by the way, if you replace U by minus U, you can actually get also the minimum principle, which says that the minimum of U is the smallest of min G, min H, min phi. So it's also kind of, ironically, it's kind of weird, uh, it's coldest also at the bottom part and the right parts, which makes sense if you think of it in terms of ice cubes instead of dragons, but it still doesn't make sense to me if you put dragons here that it should also be coldest, but at least in our model it says so. And let me just give you a quick example just to... Uh, motivate this a bit. So again, what was the one I had? So, uh, yes, so let's say u t equals k u x x, and then u is, b by the way, it's a very bad example, but uh, I'll tell you why, but it still kind of works. So x is between 0 and 2, and t is between 0 and 2 pi, and initially, we say it's 4 minus x squared, and at the boundary point, so it's sine and 2 plus cosine. So u of 0 t equals sine of t, and u of 2 t equals 2 plus cosine of t. Again, very bad example because it turns out this is not quite continuous, but we need our function to be continuous. Because uh, you know, if, it had a, if it has a jump, the maximum could be anything, really. And also, well, I kind of assume x and 2 are like, included in this, even though technically not. But the question is, what is the maximum of u? Well, by what this says is the maximum of u is just the largest one of, well, maximum initially of 4 minus x squared. But the maximum of that on that interval, at least closed interval, would be 4. The maximum of the left endpoint would be 1. And again, that would be a pi over 2. And the maximum of 2 plus cosine of t, which would be 3. You know, so t equals 0, which again, you know, that's why it's a bad example. And therefore, the question is, what is the largest value of u? Well, the largest one of those three. So it turns out 4 is the largest one. So the maximum of u is 4, and that's attained. Notice this is at t equals 0, and that maximum is at x equals 0. So kind of the largest value of u is 4, and it's attained at 0, 0. So initially and the left endpoint. And similarly, you can do the same thing with the minimum. So I guess the minimum value here is 0. The minimum value is minus 1, and the minimum value here is 1 and the smallest value is at minus 1. And, but that's very interesting because what do we know? So we know that the maximum of u is 4. So u is at most 4. And the minimum value is 1. So u is at least 1. And so in particular, without even solving for your PDE, you know that u is between minus 1 and 4. And that's kind of the essence of the maximum principle, is to get kind of pointwise estimates of your PD solution without even solving it. And here's a very important application why we care about this. So let's prove uniqueness. So here's the claim. Suppose u solves the heat equation, ut equals k uxx. Initially, it's zero. And at the endpoints, it's zero. 
So u0 t equals 0 and u l t equals 0. Let's show that u is identically equals 0. And I have done that before with energy methods, but here we will do this with the maximum principle so you can really appreciate why, wow, I don't know, what makes this so different and so unique, no pun intended. Okay, so what do we know? We know we have this box, right, from 0 to L, and then this is 0 to T, and we know U is 0 here. It's 0 here, and it's 0 here. And we just want to deduce that U is 0 everywhere. So uh, what do we know? Well, we know that the max of U is the largest of the following. Well, the max of the initial condition, which is just zero, which is zero. The max of the left endpoint, which is the max of zero, which is zero, and the max of the right endpoint, which is the max of zero, which is zero. And so it's really the largest one of those three. So the max of u equals zero. In particular, if the largest value of u is zero, it means that u is smaller than that value. So u is less to equal to zero for all x and t. And well, then you can just redo this, but uh, if you want, either with minus u or with the minimum, so the minimum of u is the smallest one of, again, the minimum of phi of x, which is 0, right, because phi is 0, the minimum of g of t, which is 0, and the minimum of h of t, which is 0. And so the smallest one is just 0. And therefore, the minimum of u is 0, which says that u has to be positive, right? So u is greater or equal to 0. So combining this, we have u is non-negative and non-positive, so u has to be identically equal to 0. Very elegant and very point-wise, okay? And again, I wanna, I wanna um, emphasize something. One method isn't better than the other, although clearly energy methods are better. Might be a bit biased, but it really depends what you wanna do. If you wanna prove point-wise stuff, like you at a point or you less than or equal to something, you gotta use maximum principle methods. If you wanna show something about integrals, you gotta use energy methods. And by the way, once we have this fact, we can just prove uniqueness of the heat equation, uh, at least you know, for finite time, on, uh, with the exact same method. Um, lastly, just in case you're curious, maybe a couple of minutes on the proof. Uh, I'm not going to prove the whole thing, but uh, let me just give you sort of a blurb of why this should be true. So suppose ut equals kuxx. Well, suppose u has a maximum inside, okay? Suppose u has a max at uh, x comma t. Well, then by the first derivative test, ut xt has to be zero, but also by the second derivative test, okay, I know there's a multivariable one, but just assume the regular single one. Well, then we know that if there's a maximum, this has to be less than or equal to zero. Now, suppose for a second, and that's not necessarily true, that the uxx is actually strictly less than zero. Then we actually get a contradiction. Because on the one hand, ut minus kuxx at the point x comma t, that should be 0 minus something negative, so in particular something positive, right? That's by this 
maximum conservation. On the other hand, by the equation itself, this should be zero. So we get zero is something positive, and that's a contradiction. Looks like an owl almost. And um, Okay, that would be a contradiction, except we don't necessarily have this. It could be zero, but the way to do this, you just modify it, I believe, by V equals to, I think, U minus epsilon x squared. Let me just double check. Uh, no, U, U plus epsilon x squared, and then we have sort of this a contradiction. So you epsilon x squared, where epsilon is uh, positive, and then uh, basically what you get is if you calculate, you see then vt minus kvxx then becomes, well, there's no t here, so just ut minus k uxx minus, so you differentiate this twice with respect to x, so 2 epsilon, and that is 0, and we get minus 2 epsilon, and that's negative. So kind of the same idea, and in particular, if this has a maximum, if v has a maximum inside, this should at least be greater or equal to 0. And, um, but uh, this is a contradiction, therefore V cannot have a maximum inside, and then you kind of show that, well, this maximum has to be on the boundary, and you let epsilon go to zero, and therefore this maximum, well, it could still be inside, but never kind of bigger than what's on the boundary. So that's why this is not a proof of the strong maximum principle. It's letting epsilon go to zero where stuff might get high click in German, you know, like, like tricky. Uh, all right, so that was a little blurb on the maximum principle. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.